Hi, I'm Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today, where we explore the latest trends in healthcare technology. I'm excited to be here at the Ezra User Conference, and I'm sitting down with a team from San Bernardino County, Dian and Umang, who's going to talk to us a little bit about some of the great work they're doing related to COVID and other infectious diseases, and how they're tracking that on the dashboard. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So, Diana, let's start with you. Um, you, I was just in the presentation where you were talking about and your team was showing some of the uh, STD tracking that you're doing and the dashboards you put together. Can you maybe share with us what those dashboards are and what's on that one information you're sharing? Yeah, so um, syphilis and STDs are um, a problem uh, across the nation and every year there's more and more cases and it presents a real challenge um, to address. Uh -huh. Uh, providers need information in terms of case counts and what's happening out in the community. So establishing this dashboard to share with healthcare providers, stakeholders, um, you know, has been really useful. It's also helpful for us. We internalize, you see it internally, um, what our metrics are and if we're meeting or exceeding certain things. Um, so yeah, so syphilis is a challenge uh, across our county, but we're trying to address it by sharing data, being as transparent as we can be, collaborating with people, and um, being innovative in the way that we share the information. So, so right now, it sounds like you're sharing information just to raise awareness of syphilis and other, uh, potentially other diseases with your community partners, like the healthcare providers. Um, down the road, uh, what are you hoping that that dashboard will do? Will it, are you hoping that it'll spur action or something like that? Or Yeah, definitely. I think with more information at, at you know, people's fingertips, they can make decisions on what is best for communities. Um, so in the past, it's been very manual to share information. We've done annual reports, but for diseases of public health importance like syphilis uh, and the impact that it can have on uh, you know, unborn children, uh -huh. you know, we need to address that uh, carefully and strategically across the county. Um, so, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get this information out there um, so that people can join us in this battle against this disease. So you started with syphilis and is the plan then to roll it out and maybe to other diseases and other conditions that you're going to track and monitor and share? Yeah, definitely. We have plans for um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, general STDs. We also are working on an ILI dashboard, which is influenza-like illness. So it's compounded with COVID information, but um, we want to um, present that information also. So we have plans to scale that up and share it on out. Um, and make it meaningful um, for people. Amazing, amazing. Umang, I want to talk to you. Uh, I was told that you are the person that's put together a lot of the COVID information that the county has been sharing out to the public. Um, can you share with us kind of what information is on currently on that dashboard that's available to the public right now related to COVID? Yes, so uh, I pretty much work on COVID-19 and it's been uh, around for two and a half or <laughs> six year. And the starting was exciting, the middle was really hot and now it's slowed down, but we still have all the tabs uh, what we share with public facing. So we have a cases tab, we have a death tab, we have vaccinations, testing, uh, we have school dashboard uh, combining it with which reflects COVID-19 situations. And we have a vaccination dash, uh, tab as well included in the COVID-19 dashboard. And you were talking to me before about how as the pandemic progressed, mm -hmm. the popularity or the use of that uh, portal has changed. You watched it evolve from where people were just interested in tracking the number of cases and hospitalizations to now actually looking more at the vaccination rate and, and those kinds of things. Talk to me about that. Yes, that's correct. So we started with the cases being the most important and looking at deaths initially and then hospitalization was one upon a time a really hot uh, tab to look into and reflect what is, the numbers are but currently now since everyone is uh, moving towards surveillance all the counties we are also moving towards surveillance and uh, right now vaccination is one of the greatest concerns and all the decisions are being ma made on it public is really curious to know hey what is the vaccination number in our county 
So that is one of the regions in COVID-19 dashboard, which is really of importance. And we do have some internal vaccination uh, decisions to be made uh, based on it. So we have a equity uh, metric showing on the vaccination tab together with what our dose situation is. So uh, pretty much uh, that is what we include in our vaccination and that's, that's where we are heading to. We need to uh, have more and more people get vaccinated. So we need to have decisions. So COVID-19 at this point, uh, vaccination dashboard showing us that, oh, this is what we uh, need to do and these are the areas we need to focus on. And there are teams which are working on it, looking on those numbers which we are providing. So it's, I was just going to ask that. So it sounds like when you identify an area of vaccination concern that you then have a team of people looking at that and kind of figure out ways to increase vaccination or increase access to the vaccine. Is that kind of what happens when people look at the dashboard internally? So when we are looking at the dashboard, for example, I give you an example uh -huh. that we have an ambassador team. So the ambassador team is responsible for giving education among the community, collaborating with the community, giving them, uh, telling them about the importance of vaccination, testing. So they, when they look at the numbers, they understand, oh, this is the area we need to more work on. We need to have more camps. We need to go in the community. We need to have health workers going around that place and uh, collaborating with the community, talking to them. And so this is how it is important. I mean, it sounds like from both of you that by sharing this information in almost real time back to your stakeholders and your partners, that you're really building trust in the county itself, like that you're a great partner and that the data is accurate. I mean, it sounds like it's really turning, the, you know, building the confidence of the public and as well as your, your own stakeholders. Is that well, your GIS, GIS is really building that trust and helping uh, the internal team to collaborate among each other, not only in the community, but among each other as well. And uh, COVID has really given us uh, this, uh, you know, looking through the power and so many dashboards. I share this with in the health and human services that we need a dashboard for dashboards to come up. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can track our internal dashboards as well. <laughs> is, it, is it fairly easy to add new dashboards? I mean, I've been told that your, your COVID dashboard evolved from a single page to yes. now multiple tabs, and you now you keep adding as more yes. users start asking for yes. things. Yes. Is it pretty easy to add them? Yes, it is pretty easy because we have got such an amazing team, you know. <laughs> everyone is uh, everyone is talented in their own fields. They have got their inputs, their thoughts. So everyone is, you know, giving their best. So why not? <laughs> I love it. So soon we're going to have like dozens of tabs at the top. Yeah, right? and then we'll have a big dashboard and then under it we'll have all the dashboards. So we'll have an <laughs> easy navigation, no problem. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Umang. Deanna, thank you so much for being on the program and sharing the information that you did. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so us. much. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> this has been Colin Hung for Healthcare IT Today. If you like this interview as much as I did, please like and subscribe wherever you're listening and watching. Also, head on over to healthcareittoday.com for the latest information and news. This has been Colin Hung. Thanks for watching. <laughs>